Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to discuss why I personally switched from TorGuard to using NordVPN as my daily driver. So guys, in this video, I'll be discussing my opinions. Additionally, I'll be putting an affiliate link for Nord in the description down below. This will give you a discount and four extra months. And right now it's on a Black Friday sale, so you'll save around 16 to 20 bucks, I do believe, compared to the rest of the year. So if you're still kind of considering switching from TorGuard, um, like I did, um, or your subscription's coming up, or you just wanna lock in that really good deal right now, to today, I would say, or this current period is the time to do so. But let's go ahead and get into the video at hand. So guys, like I said, this video is just my opinion uh, based on my own experience with TorGuard and NordVPN both. I'm not making any definitive claims here, just sharing my perspective as someone who's tried both extensively and sharing my personal experience. So guys, one of the biggest reasons I stopped using TorGuard actually maybe six or seven months ago is because I had a pretty bad bug with the client. For some reason, it just would like open and then disappear and I wasn't able to use TorGuard and to this day, I still cannot use it. Even to this day, I still have this bug. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys what it is. So let's go ahead and just raise this down here so you can see my apps. So you can see TorGuard says it's open. It has like this like weird white screen. And if I click on it, um, nothing happens. It's just like, I can't find where it went. Um, very odd issue and I've never been able to resolve it. I brought up this issue with the team and the team seemed to okay trying to troubleshoot it with me, but most of the troubleshooting steps they sent me were just really basic ones. So I didn't even get back to them because um, it seemed like they didn't really know what was going on. So I thought I had found someone with a similar issue to me. This guy four months ago was complaining about an issue where TorGuard could not um, the tray icon disappears up or restart and TorGuard won't restart. This guy doesn't seem to be able to fix it. I'm curious to see if he ever managed to fix it or said anything about it. Doesn't really look like he was saying much about it. Um, only solution is uninstall the Windows 10 update. So it could be that some updates seem to mess up TorGuard, but for me, it's still, I'm not gonna uninstall an update to get just TorGuard working. Um, so perhaps it was a Windows update, um, but you could see here me talking to them. I, I, I reported this issue a month ago. Um, they seem to think of some issue with Malwarebytes. Um, I don't even use Malwarebytes anymore. Um, this guy says, Torgor was saying this is the first time they've heard about it. And I said, I reported a few days ago, so maybe it's not the first time. Um, they're saying you did not reply to troubleshooting questions. That is true, um, but it's because they were so basic and they didn't really help anything. I just, they and, and they didn't really seem to be aware of the issue. Um, apparently no one could reproduce it. Um, they added some other things. Um, and this, these are things that I've already tried before. Um, they claim that they are not aware of the issue. So not sure. Um, they never seem to be able to fix it. Um, and I still have this issue to this day. Now I thought I would give Torgor benefit of the doubt, you know, maybe i just need to reinstall it maybe they have fixed this issue for me i want to be fair i always want to be fair on my channel even if i don't like TorGuard or the company that runs it anymore so i went ahead and uninstalled it and redownloaded it and it's still having uh the same issue you could see on my thing it won't pop up it's just a white screen but then i was like wait a second why would this issue be fixed they haven't updated TorGuard since february of this year and I've been having this issue for the last four months and it's now October. So if this is actually an issue with their client, um, they have not been aware of it and they have not fixed it for some people. Um, but I don't know, maybe this is just a personal issue on my computer. Maybe this is some update that messed it up. Maybe like they said, it's some VPN that's messing it up. Despite the fact I've never had this issue before with TorGuard. Uh, maybe this is something that got messed up along the way. But again, since TorGuard has not been updated um, since February, um, it, it just doesn't leave me good confidence in this issue actually being fixed um, for me ever, really, ever. <laughs> so that meant the only thing that would work was basic WireGuard app using TorGuard configurations, which was not good enough for me. In my opinion, I think the team kind of seemed like they thought I was trolling them or something like that. It didn't really seem to take my um, issue very seriously. Second reason I kind of stopped wanting to use TorGuard over time, even though I was still using it for a while, is that I feel like TorGuard software is just kind of stuck in the past a little bit. The client hasn't really seen any major significant updates or design improvements in a long time. And in fact, the last time I said it saw a major overhaul, it was around three or four years ago during kind of like the pandemic where they just kind of refreshed the design, but that didn't actually do much to the application. Connection times are slower than other VPNs. Um, navigating the settings sometimes can feel a little outdated. 
Um, compared to some other modern VPNs like NordVPN or even Surfshark, it definitely does feel laggy and sluggish on the PC. That said, on the mobile clients, I didn't really have as many issues for whatever reason. But since I've been a user for Torgard for so long, I kept hoping that the application would kind of get rid of that clunky feel and stuff like that and eventually get the overhaul it needed. But that is yet to happen. And like I said, my kind of experience with the client has only gotten worse over time with some of those bugs I've been experiencing. It just doesn't really feel up to date or competitive to other VPNs nowadays. Number three, bouncing off kind of that point is that Torgor does lack essentials like split tunneling, some compatibility with other applications like Apple TV. And for the most part, it seems like the team has no interest in developing these features. In fact, I've found links on the forum saying the team was actively developing split tunneling, but apparently ran into some issues. But then later on, they say, they don't really want to develop it anymore because it's not a secure offering. However, that said, almost every other single VPN offers this feature. And besides ExpressVPN, there haven't been any reports of issues with split tunneling being insecure. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. To me, it just seems like the team is stubborn and doesn't really want to adapt or implement new features that other VPNs do have that make them compelling. Number four, I think Torgard has focused too many of their efforts on unappealing bundles and other offerings. For example, there was a service they were really focusing for a long time called Private Router. Nowadays, if you look at the GitHub, it hasn't been updated for months. The main guy working on it um, apparently got fired um, and doesn't work there anymore. Additionally, some of the other services like Private Cloud and stuff like that were supposed to integrate with the router um, just feel too confusing to me and kind of overly complicated. Additionally, other services like Nord um, kind of mesh networking, I think it might be called Nord Layer now, um, just it's kind of very similar it lets you kind of remote back into your network and it just works much more seamlessly and it's actually free to use so i just find that a lot of torgard's focus on some of these peripheral products weren't really things that i kind of value that much with their bundled offerings and as a paying customer i wouldn't actually pay for them myself other services like surfshark for example have stuff like incogni or antivirus built into their VPN, which is much more compelling for me and a much better value proposition. So I do think I'd prefer other VPNs bundled offerings compared to tour guards. Additionally, I've never really wanted to pay extra for the streaming bundle and stuff like that, since I don't necessarily need to use stuff like that. But on the one chance I do want to use it, I would just prefer it to be built in. Additionally, TorGuard has developed other products that I think are kind of pointless. For example, they developed a torrent application, which didn't really seem to get that good feedback from the community or myself. I reviewed it and largely it just kind of seems like a rebranded version of a different other open source application with TorGuard's ads posted all over it. I think that the team got some criticism for all these ads and I think later they did kind of patch them out, which is kind of funny. But at the end of the day, this just seemed like kind of like not that interesting to me. Another point is that one reason I stopped wanting to use the product was just the poor communication and hostility from the team itself. Um, I kind of noticed that um, when I was pointing out issues, like I said, with some of the applications, as I didn't really, I, I felt like uh, the team just thought I was like trolling them or something. Additionally, I was blocked from their social media, removed from their affiliate program after voicing some of these criticisms. In my view, this response uh, was particularly upsetting because I had supported TorCard for a long, long time even when they were at their peak. And I think I kind of brought them to their peak. Um, I was really promoting TorGuard a lot during the pandemic. And that's kind of when I think it really reached its peak. And the, the fact that they just kind of blocked me and stuff like this when I was starting to voice some criticisms on the product, I uh, felt like it just kind of, they only appreciated my voice when it was positive. Basically what this is called is a fair weather friend. They're only with you when things are good. And then when things are a little shaky, they just kind of don't want to be you know your friend anymore that's kind of what it felt like with tour guard for me another issue i've had with tour guard that kind of makes me not want to use it is that they kind of present themselves as a champion of online privacy anti-censorship and so on but from what i've observed on their subreddit lately they seem to be suppressing criticism and deleting any posts that make them look bad i've noticed that they've actually deleted multiple posts of other affiliates complaining they were not being paid uh they've deleted some of my own community members complaining about things and they've deleted some of my posts as well my opinion, this kind of behavior from a company that claims to stand for transparency and free speech, and especially when transparency and free speech is so vital in the privacy and VPN industry, it's not a good look for them. And I can show proof here on the screen. You can actually look and see what subreddits have been deleting. I don't know if the TorGuard team knows this, but yeah, it's definitely a thing. And you can see all these red things are things they've deleted. Another issue I've had with TorGuard is it seems like there's been a lot of weird trolls kind of interacting with the TorGuard community and kind of being promoted by the TorGuard community. I encountered this guy called John Horner who made a hit piece on me that was just completely fluff and just kind of fabrications. 
The funny thing about this is I don't know if some lawyers went after him or some of the VPNs here shit talking got mad at him, but it has a disclaimer even on the piece you made about me. This work is a creation of fiction crafted solely for the purpose of entertainment. So he's even saying that all this is just BS and he actually has this disclaimer on every one of his articles, which means that he's saying that every one of his articles is just made up. So yeah, he just made up some random shit about me and uh, posted it in an article. It just seemed, it was a really kind of weird kind of time for this. I made a couple of videos about it. Just gave me a very bad taste in my mouth because I wasn't really sure what was going on. You might be wondering, well, why does this have to do with Torgard? Well, the first time I ever heard of this guy was actually he was posting his Medium articles on the Torgard subreddit. And this is kind of how I found out about him. If you click on his post here, he has lots of articles where he's promoting Torgard, um, claiming he's not an affiliate or associated with the company at all. But he writes these huge articles promoting Torgard, and he's done this multiple times while posting in their subreddit and everything like that. And simultaneously, anytime I would make another video, um, sometimes I would make something about Surfshark or maybe um, you know one of the other VPNs. It seems like almost the next day he would make a counter article telling everybody why the VPN I'm talking about is so bad. Um, you could find uh, other articles here talking about Incogni. Um, yeah, here it is. I made a video about Incogni and the next day he made one like this. So just very, very odd. I couldn't tell you exactly how this is related to Torgar, but like I said, it's kind of weird connections, you know, posting pro articles about about Torgard and then simultaneously trashing me and then just promoting Torgard lots of it and posting it in their subreddit and stuff like that. Definitely weird. Another reason I stopped wanting to use Torgard and I, I probably will never use it again is that I just have an uncertain future for it. As someone who's previously promoted it a lot, I noticed that almost every single person I found using Torgard was someone who had found them through my reviews. Now that I've withdrawn my support and kind of tell people not to use it anymore, at least from my own perspective, I question whether Torgard actually has the marketing chops to stay competitive. Their actions have have alienated a lot of affiliates. You just have to go on Google and look. There's countless affiliates out there that are no longer paid by Torgard. Um, no longer, um, you know, Torgard kind of burned their bridge with these people. And these people, content creators, other people who like Torgard and value it as a product, no longer are promoting Torgard probably because Torgard just kind of started ignoring them. Uh, that doesn't seem to be good for Torgard, at least since they don't really seem to be sponsoring any huge YouTubers or anything like that. And they probably don't have the budget to do that like something like NordVPN would. And if you look at Google Trends, you can see a general kind of decline in Torgard's trajectory. Um, it just seems like it's getting less and less popular, at least when it comes to Google searches, which is definitely not a good look. Finally, I think Torgard does present a lack of value in some ways. Now, at the end of the day, if you use the right promo code, it is very, very cheap. But that said, they do still require up charges for common things like 10 gigabit per second servers. Other services like NordVPN Surfshark offer this for free, included within their plans, whereas TorGuard makes this a charged upsell. So that's definitely kind of something that I still think TorGuard's value and bundled offerings are kind of weird. Now that I've kind of discussed why I don't really like TorGuard anymore, I kind of alluded to it some ways, but I could talk about why I switched to NordVPN instead and why it works for me better. Number one is that it just works. Um, in my opinion, one of the best things about NordVPN is how seamless it really is. The app launches without any issues. It connects very quickly. You can switch to any region you want to watch streaming content. It's available on Apple TV. Like I said, the streaming content is built into the application itself. All the servers are 10 gigabit per second. There's lots of servers to choose from. It guarantees high speeds for the most part. It works on US torrenting. Uh, TorGuard is blocked for that due to some issues they had there. Um, but NordVPN just has a bigger server network overall. At the end of the day, though, they also have done other things Torgard has not, like a no-log audit, which is good. The bundles are more compelling to me. They have password managers and things like that, cloud storage. Um, I think it would be kind of cool um, to kind of bundle in Incogni, maybe even with it or something like that, since it is kind of a sister product offered by Surfshark. But, you know, that's kind of more Surfshark's thing. Um, I do think NordVPN is more professional nowadays. Now, I've had disagreements with the team in the past. I'm not going to say um, that I haven't had any disagreements with some of my videos. But at the end of the day, back then, you know, maybe I was overly critical of them and um, maybe not doing the best of my ability in my videos. But outside of that, they have improved since then. 
a lot and they have really kind of stepped up their service. And if you look at some of these trends, like the search results and some of the things about the service, it's not like they're getting worse, which is definitely something that I look for. I want service to get better. And that's something that NordVPN has done. They seem to be willing to improve and improving their product offering. Um, and they have never just completely cut me out and blocked me and said they don't want to interact with me at all to improve their service that at least have seemed open to that dialogue. So ultimately my decision to move to NordVPN was about finding a service that meets my needs without the hassle. Um, I believe it has a better balance of performance, support, and transparency as well. Um, while each you know, while all your needs might individually differ, in my opinion, NordVPN has proven to be more reliable and user friendly as a VPN for me to choose right now. So, guys, that's just my opinion, though. Of course, in this video, let me know if you're going to switch in the comments down below or if you already have or if you don't plan to. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.